What's up, Taiwan? I'm Rick Lowett with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. The sea in northern Taiwan was set alight for Geelong City's yearly Ghost Festival celebrations. The festival is the largest Ghost Month event in Taiwan. It seeks to bring rest to lost and wandering souls through rituals and offerings. Effigies are burned at sea to attract spirits to land. Taiwan's Ghost Month takes place on the seventh month of the lunar calendar each year. During this time, the gates to the underworld are believed to be opened, allowing spirits to wander the earth. Political controversy has spilled over into Geelong's Ghost Festival, the city's mayor attended, but citizens hoping to recall him turned out too. John Van Trieste reports. Geelong Mayor George Xie faces his first public challenge since election officials set a date for a recall vote aimed at removing him, October 13th. His opponents say he abused his power, sending police into a shopping centre to push through its handover to a company run by an ex-girlfriend's family. But Xie says recalls have become a political tool to reverse democratic elections. It's a view many in his party, the Guomindang, share. Speaking to residents ahead of the city's famed ghost festival, Xie said the city is on his side. But citizens who've banded together to remove Xie say the real political manipulation is coming from election officials. They say the election commission has raised the profile of the recall vote, perhaps to sway the results in Xie's favor. Two days since election officials set the date for the vote, both sides are gearing up for a clash over this key northern port city's political future. James Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Former Thai Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat has received a royal pardon. It comes a day after his daughter was elected as the new Prime Minister of Thailand. 75-year-old billionaire Taksin is one of Thailand's most prominent politicians. He was in power from 2001 until 2006, when he was ousted in a military coup. Taksin spent the next 15 years in exile. After returning to Thailand, he was sentenced to eight years in prison for graft and abuse of power. But he only served six months before being granted parole, which was set to end later this month. Pakistan is rushing to prevent an outbreak of Mpox after detecting its first case of the virus on Friday in a person who had recently travelled abroad. The country's largest airport has been screening passengers and fumigating public areas. Mpox causes pus-filled lesions and flu-like symptoms and can be deadly. Two new strains of the virus are currently spreading in Africa and the World Health Organization has declared the outbreak a global public health emergency. Scorching temperatures across the planet have cities looking for ways to beat the heat. A team of scientists in London are testing a mossy solution. Harrell Hughes tells us more. A London rooftop, home to various types of plants, wildflowers and solar panels. And just below, the world's largest biosolar research project, focused on studying the development of plants and insects in urban environments. But the planet's ever-rising temperatures have researchers looking for new answers, ways to beat the summer heat through plants and architecture. And they think there is a natural solution, moss. Mosses on a, on a green roof uh, means that roofs will be highly absorptive because mosses tend to absorb about 16 times their weight in water in a matter of minutes. Trees have long been used to absorb heat across cities. Infrared imaging shows just how effective they are. The brighter the shade of white, the warmer that spot is. But moss is a non-flowering plant without roots and can grow easily across large areas. It's known for its extreme adaptability, able to withstand drought and extreme heat while retaining a large amount of moisture, an ideal candidate for green rooftops. The green roofs, the way they reduce the heat is by um 
providing a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity, and they transpire a lot. So the plants transpire, and this is how they cool the heat that uh, normally they suffocate from. And so they cool their surrounding environment by transpiring. Scientists hope moss can grow and thrive in urban environments on its own and have focused research on two perspectives. One of them is how do we create the right environmental conditions, the optimal environmental conditions for moss to grow on building elements. And we do that through designing surfaces and designing materials. The second is to find ways to grow the moss inside before bringing it outside. The research on mossy rooftops is fairly new, but as temperatures are expected to continue soaring, scientists say a biocarpeted rooftop will be the way to keep cities cool moving forward. Chris Monharel Hughes for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan is mulling whether to increase the country's minimum wage. The Labour Ministry will consult labour unions, business leaders and politicians on a possible pay hike early next month. Officials have not ruled out raising the minimum wage for a ninth straight year. Labour unions are pushing for a 4% raise that's based on the consumer price index and the country's economic growth. A hike would benefit some 2 million of Taiwan's workers. Taiwan's Olympic badminton legends Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin have appeared at a tournament in Taipei. But the pair, who made history by winning gold medals in their event in two consecutive Olympics, did not play together. Li and Wang's camaraderie and humour have made them national treasures, but Li has said he will retire later this year. Taiwan joined world boxing under the name Chinese Taipei, along with four other countries on Friday. Other new members include Pakistan, Bhutan, Fiji and Ecuador. Taiwan's inclusion in the regulating organization comes after the country's top boxer, Lin Yuting, won the gold in the women's 57 kilogram category at the Paris Olympics. The federation now has 42 member countries, with more expected to join. While the country is still basking in the afterglow of the Paris Olympic Games, the government is planning a new sports ministry. Sandy Chi has the details. Taiwan has begun work on creating a new ministry for physical education and sports development. The government says it will set up a team tasked with upgrading the sports administration currently under the education ministry. We will create a new consultation team. We will set up a team tasked with upgrading the sports administration currently under the 然后另外我们也邀请了一些我们非常知名的一个选手哦，包括呃郭庆存啊、李阳、哦庄志渊、连振宁这几位选手，呃也会一起来呃加入这个咨询小组。The announcement follows the conclusion of the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. Taiwan secured a total of seven medals at the Games, two gold and five bronze, marking the country's second highest medal count ever. One of the athletes on the team is Li Yang, a Paris Olympic gold medalist. He successfully defended his title with his partner Wang Qiling in the men's badminton doubles. Li has high hopes for this new ministry. President Lai Qingde included plans for the new ministry in his inaugural address in May. 我们也期待一个更健康的台湾，成立体育暨运动发展部，推展全民运动。Currently, over 5.52 billion U.S. dollars has been allocated to the plan for 2025. Continued funding is expected to reach the 616 million U.S. dollar goal set by President Lai by 2027. With the help of this new ministry, the government aims to provide long-term support for athletes and promote a healthier future for Taiwan. Ethan Pan and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. A growing number of U.S. senior citizens are signing up for classes on AI, both to feed their curiosity about new developments and to learn how to better protect themselves from scams. John Van Trieste has this story. 89-year-old Barbara Winston takes careful notes at a special lecture for senior citizens. She's one of a growing number of older Americans who've become fascinated with AI technology. As the demand to know more spreads, classes like this one are opening across the United States. 
the technology is so interesting and so important that I really felt I need to be better informed about it. So um, this is the beginning of my education. There are several reasons for this interest among senior citizens. One is a desire to keep up to date with developments in the world. I think this is an emerging technology. Um, older adults are future oriented. They want to know what's going on. While there's wonderment at all things AI can do, there is also a need to educate older adults about the sophisticated new tools scammers use to target them. The American Association of Retired Persons, or AARP, says Americans over 60 are scammed out of 23.8 billion U.S. dollars a year through various schemes. These may involve voice cloning and other technological tricks. It's tricky to kind of find that right balance. I would say overall, that suspicion that's there on the part of seniors is good, but I don't want them to become paralyzed uh, by their fears uh, and, and not be willing to do anything online because they're afraid of their identity getting stolen. Not everyone feels the need to go jump on ChatGPT or play with AI image generators once these classes end. I do want to know how to use it. I want to understand it, but it's like a lot of other things. I like to understand it, but it's not for me. But everyone leaves with an appreciation for a technology that may well radically change the world. Leon Lian and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. China's Gen Z is coming of age, but faced with long work hours and mounting economic pressure, these young workers are turning to a simpler way of life. Jonathan Kaplan takes a look at China's wellness industry. Plastering the streets of Shanghai. Ads for vitamins, probiotics, and mushroom supplements. Part of a boom in China's wellness industry. Chinese medicine practitioner Zhang Jinghua is teaching adults about reproductive health. She says she's filling a gap in knowledge about general health. China's Gen Z and Millennials are turning their focus towards their health. And the concept of Yangsheng, cultivating one's life force, is appealing to overworked urbanites. One of Zhang's students says the traditional medicine classes are revealing new ways to look after herself. With growing economic woes and sky-high housing prices, young workers are feeling squeezed. Combined with lingering anxieties from years of battling COVID in China, the younger generation is turning toward their health as a way to maintain their own sense of balance and control. But these kinds of health solutions are nothing new. China has the world's second largest health and wellness industry, worth more than 680 billion U.S. dollars. And the first Chinese medicine practices date back to 200 BCE. But the rise of online influencers is fueling a new type of demand within the industry. Whether a trend or a traditional way of life, China's young people face an uncertain economic future. But they're refocusing on what they feel may be their best investment, their health and longevity. Scott Huang and Jonathan Kaplan for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, here's a few more images of Geelong's Ghost Festival. I'm Rick Lowert. You watch out for all those ghosts out there and we will see you next time.